This year, while Honeywell is blowing out 100 candles, the commercial division can celebrate about half that many years. Most people date our birth to 1937, the year Honeywell acquired National Regulator Company, and with it, entry into the pneumatic controls big time. What was it like in those days? With me is Joe Liebel, a retired fitter foreman who was there when it all began. Joe, how long had you been working at National Regulator when Honeywell took it over? About 18 years. Well, let's see, the uh, purchase was made in 37, so you'd be uh, in, the, in the early 1920s when you started working there. 23, I think it was. 23? Yeah. Boy, long time ago. Yeah, that's a long time to live. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was 19, uh, 23, in the, and <clears throat> that was right after the Depression. Yeah, well, right in it. Yeah, right in it, Mother, yeah. yeah. Well, tell me a little bit about National Regulator. Uh, what kind of a company was it? What were the people like, and what was their business? Well, they were good people. I met the owner a few times. He came here. Mr. King, his name was. What happened when uh, Honeywell took over and the, the company changed hands? I uh, roughed in a job down at Austin for National Regulator. And uh, when I got through, it came back. And I knew there was something going on, so we all got laid off. I did, and the other guy that came later. First thing you know, uh, Ralph Chrysler called. So the, the other fellow was named uh, Jim O'Brien. So he and I went to work. So I went down there and roughed it in for National and finished it for Honeywell. I'll be darned. <laughs> And the same time, the, uh, these electricians had a couple of schools down there, and they were kind of wondering what kind of this stuff this is, work by air. So they came over one afternoon. I knew they were coming. Oh, I knew it. <laughs> so when they come over, I had everything working just perfect. And they looked at it and turned the knobs, and everything just worked perfect, including these. And this. Well, let's, uh, let's uh, talk about this a little bit. These are some... Uh products that were current in your early days, why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Mm. Well, the, this is a, a long way around to control. Now, instead of using these that go to the uh, steam valves, they use different tension springs. So one opens after the other in sequence. And what time period would this date from? Mm. Well, it was there when I started, and Honeywell used it. So it probably in the beginning. It probably was developed uh, 1920 or before. Oh, way before, before I'd say. Then. Yeah, before that. At World War One. Yeah, right around in there. Yeah. Here's another. Uh, this uh, pneumatic thermostat is this? Yeah. I'm going to take the cover off here, and you can tell us a little bit about what's inside. Well, <laughs> this is it. Now, what, what? This is a, the expansion contraction element. So this is an ebonite tube. So instead of a bimetal strip that bends, this right. what uh, up and down goes up and down. Yeah. If uh, I, I think it's probably no. By golly. Maybe I'm going. Shouldn't go in there. As long as you can put it back now, together. <laughs> now, when this uh, contracts, it gets colder. Here's, a, here's your air. Turn this now so the camera can see it. When this, uh, this sits in there like that, when that pushes down, see what it does down here? Right here? Sure. That lets the air come out, uh, leak on the branch yeah. line, come back out. Just, just the way the bimetals do today. Yeah, so when it gets, that gets warm, that expands again, lets that go back in there, then the air can come back through here. Through the tube. Through the tube. Well, you mentioned uh, a couple of names uh, from the branch. What are some What are some other people that you worked with in the Twin City branch that folks might remember? Uh, John Haynes was he? Uh, John Haynes was here. But yeah. he was he was in the office. Yeah, we'd see him now and then, not too often. Well, what about some uh, some people upstairs? Did you ever know W. R. Sweat, the uh, founder of the company? I've met him a couple of times. I'll be darned. What was he like? Do you remember? Well, not enough. I couldn't tell. I uh, didn't talk to him too much or anything like that. But you'd see him when he'd come out yeah. and visit a job. Well, how, how about his son, H.W. Sweat? H.W., yeah. He was a nice guy. Harold, yes. Harold, yeah. Kind of quiet, but real nice. 
Yeah. And he'd come out and visit the projects too. Yeah, he's seen I've seen him on jobs and and I worked here. He'd come around here and look them all over. And well, what about I, I? I happen to know that uh, you worked with Bob Prey out in the branch. Uh, yeah. Is he uh, reasonably uh, trustworthy? I wouldn't trust him at night. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I know what you mean. <laughs> Being on the road uh, in those days was a little different than it is now. Uh, oh, boy. How did you travel? Did you have a company car or a truck? or? We had a company train. A company train. <laughs> Northern Pacific. <laughs> Northern Pacific, yeah. You'd wait till, and it'll, and it'll go, it'll leave at night, never during the day. You'd work all day and then go home, change clothes, and wait for that train to go out on this job, wherever it is. And you're taking your toolbox and... Big toolbox, check it in with uh, your ticket, you know, in your suitcase, and uh, you get on the train and uh, hot, it was during the day, it was hot, you'd open up the window, and the cinders are flying yeah. in your face. You remember that? But uh, then we get through with the job, ready to come home. We'd have to wait till the next day, that night, before we catch the train. And we come home. You were telling me something about a, a blizzard you got caught in. Oh, that's in that book. Oh, that sheet there. When did we get that out? I'll show you something. Yeah. You can read it, huh? Yeah, okay. The headline is Neither Snow, Nor Rain, Nor Heat, Nor Gloom a Night. Joe Liebel, pneumatic installer for the Twin City office, recently got stalled in Pine Island, Minnesota in the Armistice Day storm, which most of you fellows have probably read about in the papers. This would be, what, 1940, I believe, was this big storm. Yeah, that was in 40. Joe felt that as long as he had nothing but time on his hands and couldn't go anywhere or do anything, he might as well call on the school board in Pine Island, which he did. He then proceeded to sell them a service overhaul for their school control system and proceeded to pay his expenses while the storm continued to range outside. We want to congratulate Joe for being on his toes even though they were two feet under the snow. And I believe he has added weight to that old saying that business is where you find it. Of course, like Joe, you have to go out and look for it too. That's a mighty good story. Well, Joe, I want to thank you a lot for sharing these memories with us. Uh, uh, I think we all understand our roots a little better now, and uh, we certainly wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Take care. Thank you.